Hi, I'm D.I. Von Driesen and we're here at Central Piedmont Community College's Central Campus and I want to give you a quick tour of EcoBox. Today is early August 2013. This is the EcoBox 1. It's a 40-foot standard high cube shipping container converted to be sort of an office. The original goal was to be a living workspace, but uh, we've tempered that for now. We've got a balcony here on the back. We've got a number of windows on one side meant to be slightly more contemporary without the panes. And we've got a salvage metal roof that captures rainwater and keeps the sun off the box. This balcony was built by students, very strong. Uh, you're able to install and uninstall it with one person. And we have a secondary wall here so that you can open the doors when someone's using the space and have a nice normal door. Or if you're shipping it or storing it, you can close the big cargo doors. Now at the moment, the box is off the ground on a trailer. This allows us to not have to deal with building permits and things like that, given the temporary nature of the container. And we have these steps. Ideally, it would be on the ground and you'd have just one or two step access. In this case, we're up a bit off the ground to accommodate the shipping chassis. But this means also a truck can pull up and throw it away pretty quickly. The goal is to have a two-day setup and takedown with two people. So we've finished the interior. We have quite a few doors and windows so as to avoid making the space feel cramped. I'm a tall guy, about six foot six, and I can just barely, not quite touch the edges. We have metal, blown cellulose insulation, and then sheetrock, and we've designed it so that there's no contact between the metal studs and the exterior metal wall to avoid thermal bridging. Um, we hope to blow more insulation up in the ceiling and blow some isonine foam from underneath on the bottom. This is the original shipping container floor, heavy duty marine grade plywood. Uh, we're experimenting with things like this is just a window air conditioning unit which uses far too much energy and we've just installed a mini split heat pump system which should make much better use of the electrical power. Over here we have a complete solar photovoltaic system. It pulls from the panels on the roof brings in DC power, we have a maximum power point charger which then charges two battery banks, so we have an 802 eight, amp hour batteries total. These come up into the inverter which supplies the whole building with 120 volts, I mean 110 uh, AC. So we have here a sub panel like you would have in your house with a cutoff. And here we have a wireless switching system for all the lights. So we can power this, uh, we can turn this on and off with pro programmable switches like this. Um, they can be programmed to control any number of lights at any time with any number of switches, which is convenient. And these do not have batteries, which is also convenient. And these were donated by Verb Lighting. So here you have the basics. If this were the live-work model, we would have a kitchenette and a bathroom here and a bedroom. However, in this case, because it's on campus and it's more for um, commercial industrial uses, this will probably end up being a class meeting space, workshop area, and we have ongoing student projects. So for example, you see these wires, CAT5, we have students configuring these to run a controlled lighting system. We have LED lights here. We have a professor working on a 24 volt computer system that will do some monitoring, and we hope to upfit, upfit the solar panels to give us a little more power. So these are the basics, so we welcome you to come to campus anytime and get a tour. And we also want to talk about the water, water filtration, sorry, water capture system. The roof with the addition is 500 square feet approximately, so each inch of rain gives us about 350 gallons of water. This goes down and processes into these 3,000 liter tanks. And after the water sits for a while, you get sediment at the bottom and a little bit of residue on the top but the water in coming out of it is largely clean. And we're looking at alternative filtration systems using UV lights and filters so that this water could be consumed in other ways. At the moment, it's just good for gardening or washing cars, but in the future, we hope to have it clean enough that you can actually drink and cook with it. So there you have it. I encourage you to contact us uh, for tours or any additional questions you have. Thank you so much.